seconds. Come on. Let's give God glory if you believe that he broke through and made a difference in your life. Blessed be his holy name. I'm going to close out this uh, segment with just sharing some things from my heart. And, uh, you know, I came up here with uh, no notes tonight. I am pretty much off the hip, but I normally don't want to talk to the whole world with no notes. But I just want to piggyback off what was being said tonight uh, because I do believe that God put this thing in tandem. We didn't script this. Uh, we didn't plan this. We didn't put it together. But this thing has just built line upon line, precept upon precept, and God is trying to get an encouraging word to you to let you know that it has happened. It just has not happened yet. Hallelujah. But it will happen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let me share a few of these things with you right quick. You know, one thing that, I, uh, that was a great revelation to me was that God, Bishop Harrell, is not in time. That was a great revelation to me. When I learned that God is not day by day, hour by hour, living out time like I am living out time, like you are living out time. Because I used to come to God, and I thought that God was right in that moment with me, going through what I was going through, and facing a dilemma, and running around. And if I prayed hard enough, I could get him to run around heaven and scratch his brow and say, what can I do to get Ron out of this thing? The fact is, I would always try to see what I could do to try to get God upset over what was upsetting me. And I never could get him upset. Anybody ever been like that? You felt like you just couldn't get God moving on the thing that was moving all inside of you. Well, the fact is, I learned one day that God is not in time. He is outside of time. In fact, not only is God not in time, time is inside of God. That's the only way he can be Alpha, Omega, beginning, end, author, and finisher. He's all of those things at the same time. Then I begin to read my Bible. Ecclesiastes 3 said, the things that have been to God have been. And then it says, and the things that are yet to be have been. Let me say that again. What has been has been, and what is yet to be has been, and God has put eternity in their heart. Oh, I'm about to say something right here. He's put eternity in their heart. I realized that the prophet Isaiah said that there's no God like our God knowing the end from the beginning. I used to think that that meant God knew the difference between the two. He knew the difference between the end and the beginning. That's not what it says. He knows the end from the beginning. In other words, God knew how it was going to finish when he started. Okay? That's how the Apostle Paul could say, the Lord who has begun a good work in you will be faithful to complete it or be faithful to finish it. How could the Apostle Paul say that with such confidence? He said that with confidence because he knew that he served a God who knows the end from the beginning. In other words, people of God, God doesn't start till he's finished. God finishes a thing, and then he starts it. He don't write a 12-chapter book and start at chapter 1. He starts at chapter 12 and then winds all the way back and makes sure chapters number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 will end up where he wanted it to end up in chapter 12. Oh, I'm here to tell some people who are in a chapter and you don't know how it's going to end. God already knows how it's going to end. And if God has started something in you, that means he's already finished it. If he started to bring you out of debt, he's already brought you out of debt. If he started working in your husband's life, he's already finished working in your husband's life. If he has started turning your business around, he's finished turning your business around. Because God doesn't start a thing until he's already finished with the thing he started. Blessed be his holy name. I realized that God didn't live in time when I started reading my Bible and realized that God always speaks to my future. You will never find God bring up your past. He comes to Jacob, which means trick, and says, Thou art Israel, which means prince. He comes to Simon, which means water or flimsy or shaky, and he says, Thou art Peter, a rock. He comes to Gideon and says, Gideon, thou mighty man of valor. Gideon's hiding. Gideon's scared out of his mind, hiding, and God immediately walks into the situation and speaks to his 
future. God never speaks to your past. He speaks to your future. How can God speak to your future with such confidence? Because he's already been in it. <laughs> now, let me back up. Let me back up. <laughs> the Bible said, Pastor Rayleigh, that who knows the things of God save the Spirit of God. And who knows the things of man except the Spirit of a man which is in him. In other words, the Bible says the Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. So we understand that the Holy Spirit, the third part of the Trinity, is the inquisitive one. He's curious, George. <laughs> he is looking into the mind of the Father concerning your life. He wants to know what God already has planned for you. You know why? There's a difference between when you were created and when you were made. You were made out of the dust of the earth. Whenever your mother and father got together biologically, God gave you a flesh suit. This is a earthly house that you live in, but this is not you. You need to take care of it. It is a temple, but this is not me. This is not who I am. This is what I live in while I'm here. The Bible says I was created in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the earth were ever laid. Before God ever said, let there be light, he had already had a thought and named it Ron. He already created an existence and named it Ron and already ordered my steps before one of them came to be. He had already said that you're going to be born in 1968, and I've already ordained a life for you and know your purpose and calling. So in 1968, God took an eternal being and dropped him in an earth suit. There's a de I was created in the heavenlies, but I was made a suit to live in while I was here on earth. And I realized that when I got here, I knew what I was supposed to be in my heavenly existence, but when we got here, because Adam ate from that tree, we all lost our mind. <laughs> Everybody lost their mind when Adam ate from that tree. So when I drop into the earth, I have a purpose, but I have no knowledge of it. That's why you got to renew your... Oh, come on, come on. Come on. I'm talking to somebody. I'm going somewhere with this. Okay? So now... Who knows the things of God except the Spirit of God? So when I got born again, I got born again of water and the Spirit, okay? So that same, self-same Spirit that has been inquisitive into the mind of God concerning my life has now come out of eternity into time and is living in my life. Who knows me except the Spirit of God within me? Do you know the Bible says in 1 John 2 and 20, you have an anointing and you know all things. You say, well, I don't know everything. Oh, yes, you do. It didn't say your mind knows everything. It said your anointing does. Come on now. The anointing is the word we describe the residency of the Holy Ghost. Jesus was anointed of the Holy Ghost. He was, an, he, he was filled with the Spirit, so therefore he was anointed of the Holy Ghost. When God came out of eternity into time and lived inside of me, that is Ecclesiastes 3. He put eternity in my heart. And now I have somebody living in me that knows everything about me. Folks, I'm going to tell you something. This is startling. Everything you need to know about your life, past, present, and future, is already in you. <laughs> yeah, my claps are going down a little bit now. God knows the end from the beginning. Why in Romans 8? Does he say, those he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he justified. Those he justified, he glorified. Notice God is speaking about you in all five categories in past tense. Why? Because to you, to God, God does not look at your life as whatever time it is right now and tomorrow. He looks at your life as a picture. He sees your life from beginning to end, author, finisher, alpha, omega, all at one. He looks at your whole life at one time in panoramic view. And he has a picture of how he has ordered the steps of your life to go. 